Hi all, welcome and welcome back to my channel. Police have released the search warrants in the case of missing and now found deceased pregnant Cassandra Cantrell. The search warrants provide shocking and very detailed information about the movements of the suspect in this case on the day Cassandra went missing. If you don't already know, Cassandra Cantrell had been missing from Parkland, Washington since August 25th of 2020 and police say they recovered her body from a cliff area on September 22nd. Cassandra's ex-boyfriend, 37-year-old Colin Dudley, was taken into custody by a SWAT team at his home and charged with murder. Dudley's home was searched by police shortly after Cassandra went missing, but he was not arrested at the time. Police have now made the search warrants in this case public, and they lay out the details about how Dudley went about luring Cassandra to her death. When I go through the specific details police allege occurred that day that Cassandra went missing, you will find that her murder was carefully planned out. According to Q13 Fox News in Seattle, who shared the information in the search warrants, police considered Dudley a suspect from day one. Apparently, Cassandra had confided in her friends that he was the father of her baby. He was an ex-boyfriend of Cassandra's from 2006, and he claims that he has been in a relationship with his current girlfriend for 14 years, but police say evidence shows that they were communicating regularly recently. A friend of Cassandra's told police that she was hesitant about telling Dudley about the pregnancy because she remembered a statement he made before when they were dating. She said Cassandra told her that Dudley said he didn't want children and that if any girlfriend of his got pregnant and wouldn't get an abortion, he would sue to get full custody just to spite the mother for having the child. Police found this information interesting. When they found her car five days after she went missing in an area her family said she would not be in, they went to Dudley for answers. Police said that when they asked about his relationship with Cassandra, he insisted that he hadn't even seen or spoken to her in over a decade and seemed shocked that people thought otherwise. He told police that his current relationship is his priority and that he wouldn't do anything to jeopardize that. Now, I need to let you know that Dudley refers to the woman he's currently in a relationship with as his wife when speaking with police. So I don't know if he's married or if he just refers to his girlfriend as his wife. But police already had Cassandra's phone records that proved that he was lying. They said when they confronted Dudley about the fact that they thought he did something to her, he denied it and stopped answering questions. They considered his behavior to be very suspicious. So... Using Cassandra's phone records of their conversations and the GPS information obtained from Dudley's truck, they were able to piece together what they believe happened the day she went missing. Investigators said that Dudley told them that he went to Costco early that morning and then returned home to do some spring cleaning. Then, shortly after 8 a.m., surveillance footage shows Dudley's truck pull into a parking garage at the Tacoma Dome train station. According to the warrant, he took a bike out of the truck and rode off. Four hours later, footage shows Cassandra's vehicle being parked by the train station by a man fitting Dudley's description wearing latex gloves. Shortly after, Dudley's truck is recorded pulling out of the parking garage. Now, this is where they can prove premeditation. Because they have him pulling his truck into the parking garage and leaving on a bike shortly after 8 a.m., Police say they know Cassandra was still alive at 8 a.m. because she was recorded on her neighbor's security camera footage leaving her home around 8.30 a.m. And police say Dudley texted her phone shortly before 9. Then they say they have information that places both of their phones at Dudley's residence. Dudley's phone records then show, about an hour and a half later, that he phoned his home security company. Then he sent a text to his wife to let her know that the power was temporarily out at the home and that she shouldn't freak out if the security cameras are down. Then, Dudley's phone is shut off. Cassandra's isn't, though, and police say they track it, leaving Dudley's home and ending at the train station at the same time Cassandra's car is left there. Police say they then tracked her phone leaving the station the same time Dudley's truck is recorded leaving. Then the final ping on her phone 
is at 12.45 p.m. around Owen Beach, where divers recovered her phone. Police say approximately 45 minutes later, Dudley's phone is turned back on and places him back at his home, where he texts his wife not to worry because the security cameras came back on. He also texted his employer, inquiring about a sealant that can be used in the basement to seal cracks. When investigators searched Dudley's home shortly after Cassandra went missing, they say they found traces of blood in various parts of the basement and in his truck. Police said they were tipped off when Dudley told them he had been doing some spring cleaning. Even though police believe Dudley erased information off his phone before they got to it, they found Cassandra's number in his phone under the name Velma. They said it made them think of an old photo they found on Dudley's phone of a woman wearing an orange turtleneck covering her face. They said it reminded them of the character Velma from the cartoon Scooby-Doo. Police say it all came together when Cassandra's family provided a photo of her dressed as Velma from Scooby-Doo, wearing the same orange turtle sweater. Sorry, turtleneck sweater. All of this, coupled with her mother's account of how she dressed up and made herself up before leaving home that morning, as if she was going to meet someone, solidified their case, and they realized that her murder was not only carefully planned, but that she was lured right into it. The search warrant answered a lot of questions that I had about this case, and I hope it did for you, too. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time, and I'll see you on my next video.